The point about the relation between tradition and innovation has very much to do with the time. So it's a matter of time. If you think of it for a while, every product, new product or very old traditional one, has been launched. So it has a starting point. And the point is, this starting point, how much is it important over time? So the tradition, the beginning, is to be held over time in order to provide value to customers or it has to be changed or abandoned completely. So the difference between tradition and innovation is only a matter of perspective and has to do with time. The issue of time in management has very much to do with the idea of life cycle, of product life cycle and market life cycle. There is a very strong emphasis given by managers and entrepreneurs to the concept of the product life cycle. And to me, they tend to overlook market life cycle. And the difference between the two are related, obviously, but there is a difference. And the difference is very easy to understand. Usually, market lasts forever. If you think a market as a representation of customers' needs, of customers' benefits, every benefit in the food and beverage business usually lasts for a very long time. If you think that the food and the beverage has to do with anger and thirst, so we can consider these two needs usually you know, forever. What changes is the way companies try to satisfy those benefits, those needs. And this has to do with the product life cycle. So in a product life cycle, we can consider the product which has a birth and a death, maybe. But the market usually does not decline. A market is usually renovated by the launch of new products. So again, the idea of traditional innovation should be considered within the concept of life cycles. A market life cycle, like a product life cycle, is usually represented through four different stages. There is an introduction, so where the market starts. There is a growth stage, when the sales of the market grow. Then there is a maturity, when usually the, 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 the sales of the market stabilize, they are steady. And then there could be a decline, that is to say, the sales starts dropping. Obviously, as I said, the, the decline in a market is very unlikely because if the, the, the sales of the market will start dropping, companies would do something to restart a new growth stage. Within the market life cycle, there is the life cycle of all the different products sold in that market. So the product life cycle, which has, again, the same stages, the birth, the introduction, the growth, the maturity and the decline, the decline is much more likely because a product which is a specific component of a specific value proposition can lose value over time for consumers and can be replaced by other products. So it's the dynamic between the product life cycle and the market life cycle that is very relevant to companies for taking their decisions. So what is the importance of tradition and innovation here? The tradition means that tradition refers to the beginning or to the history of a product or of a market. But the point is how it is important to keep the tradition as if over time. Also tradition can be renovated. So there are some aspects of that tradition that can be innovated in order to keep the traditional elements of a value proposition alive over time. So the point is, how can companies use the life cycle model, the product life cycle model, or the market life cycle model? There is this tendency of managers and entrepreneurs to think of life cycle as exogenous to their action. That is to say, the market goes, or the product life cycle goes, independently of my action. But actually, every market and every product life cycle depends completely on the actions of companies. So companies, each individual company and all the competitors within the market can influence the life cycle of the product, that is to say, can influence the different stages through which the product or the market go through. So one point could be, in order to understand how to influence the evolution of a market, of a product life cycle, which are the determinants of a specific shape of the life cycle. The traditional way of representing a life cycle at the product level or the market level is the introduction stage is a stage where sales are very limited and the growth of these sales is limited as well. So basically the growth stage is when sales start growing. 
That is to say, companies do something to increase the sales, and the sales start growing. So the market is growing. And it grows up to a point where the rate of growth reduces up to zero. And this is the maturity stage. In the maturity stage, basically, the product or the market has reached the potential, the maximum level of sales. And then the product, if it does not correspond within a value proposition to specific customer needs, starts declining. That is to say, sales starts dropping. So the point is, which or what determinants do give the product life cycle that shape? There are two basic main determinants. One regards the consumers, the second regards the competitors. As for the consumers, many researches show that consumers tend to have an approach, an attitude to innovation, which can allow us to classify them in different groups. There are some consumers which are considered, which are innovators, pioneers. They like innovation. They are a very limited amount in every market, but they tend to appreciate very much new products. There is the new beer, there is the new uh, wine, there is new uh, vodka, there is the new yogurt, a new value proposition with a new product, they appreciate it. Very small amount. Then there are the so-called early adopters. Early adopters, in terms of size, in terms of numbers, they are a bigger group than the innovators. And they have a slightly different characterization compared to innovators. They like innovation, but they are more opinion leaders. So that is to say, they are more able to influence other people through their choices, through their behaviors. Then there is the big majority of consumers. In every market, the big majority of consumers tend to buy a new product only if or only after they have seen other consumers, the early adopters, consuming the product. So basically, they need to be reassured by the choices of other consumers. Usually this majority is split in two, an early majority and a late majority. But the difference basically is not so much between these two groups, but between the majority and the early adopters. And the last group is usually called laggards. That is to say, people who tend to buy a product only if a lot of other consumers have bought before and consumed before that product. So this shape, which is a shape given in numbers, gives life to a specific shape of the product life cycle. So from a company point of view, I can influence the product life cycle with my competitors by trying to uh, put back, to anticipate as much as possible, the moment in which the majority will start buying the product. So if there are uh, many consumers who tend to buy the product in advance, it will increase the sales of the product and so start the growth stage of the product life cycle. If the innovators and the early adopters are very limited and there is no word of mouth, no passage of information between this group and the majority, the sales of the product will, stay very, will be very limited. So the growth stage would not start. So the point from a company is how to enact the growth stage of the product life cycle in order to increase the sales. The point again is how much or how tradition can count on it. Because obviously this is a matter of how tradition is part, fundamental part of the value proposition. And this helps us also if we consider the competitive dynamics. So as we said, the product life cycle depends on the consumer side and also on the supply side because competitors play a game which is an imitation differentiation. If a product is successful, a competitor will try to launch a product which is slightly different, but also similar to the successful product. So this imitation game, again, would enact growth because the sales of the competitor would, by definition, steal some part of the sales of the, the innovator, but would also add new sales to the market. And so it's the combination of imitation and differentiation which contributes to give the product life cycle its stage. So the point again is when playing this imitation differentiation game, some companies would decide to keep, to stick with the tradition. Some companies would try to innovate. So the imitation differentiation game is also, a, we can be considered this as a game between tradition and innovation. But the point is also if a company for its mission, for its values, for its uh, uh, main goals, decides to stick to the tradition, that is to say to build 
its authenticity on the more traditional side, this tradition should be interpreted over time. So the idea here is, for every company, how can I revitalize the products or how can I choose to go for completely new products? So the dilemma can be considered this. It is more effective, more profitable, more interesting to me, to my company, to try to revitalize an old product by revitalizing the tradition according to which this product has been successful in the past or launching a new product. That is to say, innovating completely. But again, this is a dilemma only if we consider it as a dilemma, because for every company, the traditional innovation can be contextual, because I can have in my portfolio products which are very traditional, and on the other side, I can add new products. Or I can have products whose tradition is innovated by adding new values, new symbols to the product itself, and other products which are completely new and can be revitalized every time the product life cycle starts, the sales of the, during the product life cycle start dropping. If we consider in the sparkling wine, champagne. Champagne is a very long story and long history product. But obviously the way champagne is made, although it is a traditional method, has been innovated over time because the technology has changed, because the way the champagne has been sold into the market has changed. So actually, the tradition of champagne has been innovated, has been renovated over time. 